Know Christ, a television ministry of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. Here's your host, Rev. Jeff Peterson. Well, today our study is on seeking first the kingdom of God. And so I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who are you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Well, we think about negative feelings. And we can certainly think about what some of these negative feelings are in our lives. Anger. That's something that we all have. For somebody to go around and say, well, I don't have any anger. Well, in other words, what you're saying is that you're not human. We have anger. We have worry and anxiety. Now, if you say, well, hey, I'm an anxious, free person, well, once again, you're not human. I mean, there's things that precipitate these things. There's things that make us angry. There are things that make us worry. Whether it be things or, or people, situations. But it's all the way that God has programmed us, and so that we have anger, we have anxiety, but yet we're taught that, I don't know, are we taught that we're, that we're not supposed to have these things? Is that what it means to be a Christian, is that we just kind of deny you know, some of the basic uh, impulses of who we are as people? You know, that's one of the struggles that sometimes I see amongst uh, Christian people is that they're really struggling in life because they're not allowed to express their anger. They're not allowed to say, well, I'm really feeling anxious right now. And so that sometimes will lead to you know, behaviors that are not good because, because we deny the fact, well, because I'm not supposed to be an anxious person, as a Christian, that means that I can't really, you know, since I'm in such denial, that means that I can't deal with it properly. Or the same thing with anger. Or any of these other negative, any of these other negative energies that we have, and that's you know basically what they are: is that they're energies, they're negative energies. And so, what do we do with energy? And after all, we're always looking for positive stuff. We're looking for positive energy, but all these things we kind of work at them, or we kind of process them and work through them all kind of in the same way. I mean, if you were to take an anger management workbook and an, an anxiety, uh, worrying uh, kind of a workbook as far as dealing with it, they're going to kind of give you the same principles as far as what to do. And so one of these things that we do is that we are to you know, use exercise. After all, like I said, these are energies, and energies 
give energy you know certainly can do a, a, a number of things to us one of the things that energy can do is that it can if we don't take care of we don't get use our energy that it will actually turn inwardly to where it can begin to harm us physically it it puts a stress upon us it puts a stress on our mind it puts a stress in our body it leads to strokes and heart attacks cancer all kinds of infirmities and so we know that if energy isn't used properly it's going to actually do the reverse and that it's going to hurt us and so we always want to take energy no matter what kind of energy that we have and to channel it into a constructive way and so that's one of the things that you need to that we all need to figure out is that when we are really angry when we are really upset when we are full of anxiety I mean, we are just full of energy and so how do we do what do we use what do we do with that energy well sometimes we can use it in negative ways where we are harming people or things you know we can go and hit somebody or we can hit a, actually I had a friend who was so angry once that he took his hand his fist and he hit a window and smashed the window and he severed you know lots of veins and nerves in his in his hand luckily he didn't lose his hand you know but he had to have a lot of surgery on it or we can sometimes if we're not hitting something you know that another negative thing is that we just kind of we're always kind of negative we're always down in the mouth we're putting everybody down being very critical you know somebody that's always criticizing that's always a sign that they're not happy in life you know somebody who's criticizing this person and that person this thing and that thing you know they're just always just constantly it's just a big it's just a big sign saying you know what this person is saying I'm not happy in life and I don't know what to do about it and so the only thing that I know is to be putting everybody down around me and somehow I feel intelligent I feel strong I feel motive you know like somehow I'm this king you know going around with a crown in this position when really all you're saying is that you're just what has made you so unhappy in life I mean, this isn't the way that God wants you to be okay so what are some constructive ways to get rid of the anger is to well for instance in anxiety is to go out into and, and to exercise I tell you you have a lot of fuel to go out and go for a run a bike ride a walk go you know for a swim play tennis you know whatever it is that you like to do uh, lift weights just get it out just keep doing it until finally all of this energy that is all pent up inside of you are ready to explode your whole person as far as your mind and your body and you just get it out that way get it out physically another thing that we can do is that and it does work is to take a well, like a notepad and a pen and just write it out take all of what is within you and just write it out just write and write and write and then you can either save it and look back on it but I but I, I know they always say well save it and look back I, don't look back on it you've gotten it out why go back there what I like to do is put it into a shredder or if you don't have a shredder burn it uh, do whatever it takes rip it up be done with it but you've gotten it you've gotten all this internal energy that's not good and you've gotten it out another thing is that you can do uh, breathing exercises to help relax and that's just simply as you know one breathing technique is just to say okay right now I need just to take a deep breath because I'm almost ready to hyperventilate but if you just you know, breathe through your nose for like or breathe in inhale through your nose for five seconds hold it for five seconds and then exhale through your mouth for five seconds and then kind of reverse it then uh, inhale through your mouth for five seconds hold it for five seconds and then exhale through your nose for five seconds and just keep doing that until your body begins to relax and it does work another thing is just uh, uh, taking your fists and just tightening them up as hard as you can for five or ten seconds and then just relax it for five or ten seconds 
and then just keep doing that. And sometimes you can use other, you know, you can tighten up your, your feet and your legs and, you know, your, your face, you know, just your whole body for five to ten seconds and then just relax it for five to ten seconds and then, and then tense up and then relax. And it's amazing how, how you begin to relax. And so you have the breathing technique, the relaxation technique, uh, something that I really like to do that when I'm feeling, you know, having anxiety about things, I'll tell you what, I can, you just sit down and you pray. That's always the best. Is that you take it to God in prayer. And you just share with God all the things that are on your mind. Just, you know, sometimes if you even have a cross, you know, just, you, you, you're just praying it, just saying, Lord, I'm, you're the one who has died on the cross for me. And you don't, you don't want me to be carrying these awful burdens around. And so right now, I'm just laying it all before you. And if, you know, if having something you know, helps you to do that, you know, say, Lord, you know, this little block right here, that represents this that I'm praying to you. And you lay it before the cross. And then you see this little... Um, key ring or whatever it is, that represents this. You lay it before the cross. You're, you're just, whatever it is. You don't have to have things, but just, you know, just pray. It's a catharsis. It's getting it all out and giving it to God. In fact, uh, God is big. God has got big shoulders. I mean, after all, he put all the weight of the world on, on the shoulders when Jesus was dying on the cross. And so we give it to the Lord, whatever it is. I mean, after all, you're our human. I know we'd all like to live the maintenance-free life, but nobody does. And that's the whole thing, is that when we are going through tough times, we think that we're the only one that's going through it. And as we look around, well, everybody else, as I look around, they are the all-together people. Well, trust me, everybody is dealing with something. And once again, if you're not dealing with something, you're probably not living. Now, here again, life is, life is good. Life is a blessing. And hopefully today, you, at the end of the day, you can give thanks to God for all the blessings of life. All of what he has bestowed upon you. But I know if you've gone through a day, you've got some of those, well, whatever you want to call them, porcupine quills, necks, Places where you've been rubbed the wrong way, some bruises. That we have those at the end of the day. And that's where we have to go before the Lord and just say, Lord, I'm really angry about this. I'm really worried. I'm very anxious about this. And, and we pray to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so the Lord always settles us down. You know, he's our Heavenly Father. I know when I pray and I've got all these things on my mind and all these things that I'm worried, it's just all of a sudden I can, you know, the, I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Heavenly Father just in such a loving and such a kind way, you know, just saying to me, well, here I am, Jeff. Have peace. Let's just take a look at this. Maybe you're making it a bigger deal than you need to, which is always the case. Let's just really look at it for what it is. And then what do we need to do about it today? What do we need to do to, in order to, you know, to go on? You know, what, what, what's a step that we can take you know, in dealing with this issue? And so we take a step, and that makes us feel better. And then we take another step. You know, and pretty soon, whatever it is, you know, it's gone. We have worked through it. And so that's the whole thing, is taking you know, what is negative and channeling it into something positive. You know, that's what Jesus did on the cross, is that uh, Jesus was dying on the cross. I mean, talking about a negative. I mean, he had all the negatives of the whole world, past, present, and future, all within him. Jesus died on a cross when he had not even done anything wrong. Jesus was without sin, but he took upon himself our sins, and so that in his resurrection now he's taken all what is negative and he's turned it into something positive. And so we have to really 
pray and hang on and pray the promises of God and to hang on to the wisdom of God. I think about what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that God works good in all circumstances for those who are called according to his will and his, and his plans in life. And so to know that God is always working when we trust in the Lord, when we take things to the Lord, so we may not necessarily see it in a day, but day by day that God is bringing us uh, to his place. He's bringing us to his kingdom. He's, he's making us his person. And, and that's the thing that we have to always remember, is that we just put our faith in God. And I guess faith, you know, and faith is the opposite of worry, is, is that as we place our trust in God, that pretty soon, you know, faith can sometimes be, you know, kind of a scary thing too. What? Take a step of faith? I can't imagine Peter, as he was getting out of the boat, to take a step on the stormy sea. Or the disciples, as they were taking the step to follow Jesus. Or as Mary Magdalene was taking a step toward the empty tomb. You know, you see where taking steps, and so when we think about taking a step, taking a step for Jesus, Jesus is calling us to carry our cross, and what does that mean? Well, to carry the cross means to be given our life for him. To say, I'm dedicating my life to, to God. And that I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, and that... I am so committed to this that, I mean, this is taking up all, every cell of my body, all of my life's energies to be a follower of Jesus, even if that means that I will die for his causes. And it's something because throughout history and even today, there are many people who are dying for the causes of Christ. And so that's the question that you have to ask yourself for, that you have to ask yourself is, is there anything that you would be willing to die for. Think about that. If push comes to shove, is there anything in this world to say, I would be willing to die for this person, or for this cause, or this organization? Because when Jesus is asking us to come and follow him, to pick up our crosses and to follow him, well... There's certainly, to carry the cross is a witness of all of what God has done, to share with others, you know, that God is the creator of all things, and that God is working his goodness, and that Jesus Christ has died for us and has arisen from the dead, and that in believing in him, that you too may have salvation. Carrying the cross means is that I'm part of the work that I'm, uh, of the church, of all of what Jesus has called us to do. You know, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to welcome the stranger, to visit those who are in prison, those who are in hospitals, those, you know, to visit the orphan, to take care of the orphans, and to take care of those who are needful. To be building up the church so that we may all come together and grow in our faith and just become stronger and stronger. You know, that we are working to be peacemakers working to become friends with each other, and that takes a lot of work. You know, friendship is not anything that can take for granted, and generally a friendship is something that really <clears throat> two people have worked at for some time. But I'll tell you what, I've also known people where they just really hate each other, and a lot of times it's not over much. <laughs> and so it takes a lot of work. You know, we always think that the strong person is the one that can go and punch another person and knock them out and say, wow, are you ever strong? No, no, that's actually a weak person. A strong person is a person that can make a friend of their enemy. So that means that you've got to pray for this person. It means that you've got to do good for this person. It means that you've got to uh, try to negotiate with this person, to try to iron out things, and then try to envision, you know, what it is that we can do together. You know, how do we, how do we live together in, in harmony. And so that's always the sign of, of a strong person. It's always a sign of a great leader. A great leader is always one 
you know, not who can say, well, we're going to build up our military and we're going to be like a juggernaut going throughout this world, you know, just knocking down everybody and look at all the debris behind us. No, a strong leader is one who can, who can negotiate and, and one who has always got that attitude. How do we make a friend of this other nation? How do we build each other up? And that takes a lot of time and, you know, to build up that trust and, and to work for peace. And so a lot of what I read from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through, through 35, it's, you know, getting that priority straight. You know, to pick up our crosses and to follow Jesus, or another way that he says it, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And, and so we, we pray for the kingdom of Christ to come. I mean, the kingdom of Christ comes... But we pray that the kingdom of Christ may come to us. That the salvation of Christ may enter into our hearts. And so that is what our Lord is calling us to. Is that our Lord is calling us to be part of the kingdom. To be part of something greater than anything of this world. Than anything that this world can produce. Is that as we pray we're calling heaven to come down. For the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest you know, himself within us and within our church, and that the kingdom of Christ continues to grow. And that we live by the principles that God, you know, has called us to live by. And I've mentioned a lot of these principles, but the principles of love, the principle of peace, and of joy, and of, of patience, and, and kindness, and building each other up, encouraging each other, sacrificing, giving, being a generous person in life. And so to seek first the kingdom of heaven is to say, well, I want to live my life for godly purposes. That the things of this world that I worry about, am I going to have enough to eat? Am I going to have clothes to wear? And that's not such a funny thing because there are a lot of people who their basic needs are not being met, where they're not getting proper nutrition where they don't have clothes to wear, where they don't have a roof over their heads. And I talk about this because, well, you know, an eighth of our world is starving to death right now. I'm getting ready to go on a mission trip to Russia where I'll be visiting orphan children, and basically the only clothes that they have are the clothes on their back. Why? Because they don't make clothes in Russia, and clothes are very expensive. And so these children who are castaways, I mean, nobody wants them. Matter of fact, when I, when I go there, you know, I'm the only one that will ever visit them. And so when they can get clothing, you know, it just makes their day. It means everything to them. You know, giving them a pack of pencils is like Christmas for them. And then as I think about the homeless, and I've worked with homeless people in a lot of different places, including the, own, my, the, own, including the church that I serve. And we can make judgments about the homeless. Well, you go out in one of those cold nights. And, and you sit out there. And you feel the cold air upon your skin. And you're wondering if you're going to have a plate of food the next day. You know, then cast your judgment. And after that, to say, oh, yeah, you know, it's actually fun being a homeless person. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to sell my home so that I can go and live on the street. I don't think any of you are going to be saying that. You know, we always look at, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Well, I don't know, maybe I just call it Jeff Peterson's hierarchy, you know, the... The pyramid, you know, mainly because you know I was a psych major, and maybe you know it just gets to be too involved. So I like to simplify things. But if you look at the bottom level, that's just basically human needs: have enough food, clothing, shelter. You know, our basic needs. When we think about, you know, we don't want to be worrying over our wants, you know, but we do need. But we are concerned about our needs. You know, what we need just to survive. Okay, so that's the first level of everything that needs to be met. Well, then the next level I'd have to say, and it's just part of being human, is that we're kind of, you know, that we're selfish. 
And so we always think about what are our goals? What is it that I want to accomplish? You know, what are our education, you know, what might be my educational goals? What are my athletic goals? You know, I guess that's what I was into is education and athletics. And so I had all these goals, and some of these goals I've met, and some of them I didn't. And, and the ones that I didn't, well, at this point, I'm not going to be able to go back in time and, and to somehow, you know, win, win maybe a conference championship that I was hoping that we would have won. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so you have that level. And I think we all know what they are. You know, everybody's talking about what are your personal goals. Are they being met? You know, it can also be relationships and, and those kinds of things, but, you know, your priorities. But then the top level is, what, what has God placed you in this world for? I mean, what is your purpose? What is your ultimate purpose? I mean, living your purpose outside of yourself. And that's really your, what ultimately we need to be working on, is that what has God placed us in this world to do? You know, so what Jesus is saying is that life is more than clothing. Life is more than food. Life is more than shelter. Life is more than what you're worrying about right now. And that there's a kingdom that Christ has called you to. That we're no longer living our lives for selfish purposes, but rather we're living our lives for the purposes of Jesus Christ and for his kingdom. And that's the thing that I want all of you to know, is that if you're looking for something that's going to take away anxiety and stress and anger, is that when you start living your life for God, and when you start living your life for the purposes for which God has called you to, the anxiety seems to leave. And that God provides for you all that you need to go about the life that he's called you to. And there's joy and there's blessedness in that life. And so seek first his kingdom. In other words, I live my life for the kingdom. And that's where my faith lies. And that's where I experience the love, the joy, and the peace that this world cannot give. That all these things will be added unto you, meaning that, that I'm out here to serve the world today for the purposes and the causes of Jesus Christ. To rise above the pettiness and all these things that we worry about you know, let us just live our lives, put our trust in, and find our security in peace and in the love and the saving grace of God. You have been watching To Know Christ with Reverend Jeff Peterson, pastor of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. For a donation of $25 or more, you can receive a copy of Pastor Peterson's latest book, God is Spirit. Thank you for watching and tune in again next week for To Know Christ.